Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat. I'm one of the top mentors and moderators in chat. As a special gift to our viewers on YouTube, we have created a free two hour course to help teach you how to start a consistently profitable trading business and identify high paying setups in just 30 days. There will be limited seating every week, so register for the course and reserve your spot now using the link in the description. As a special bonus for everyone that watches the entire video, we will give you the link to a free 10 hour additional mini course that has never been released to the public. Register now before all slots completely fill up. All right, so I had a trade on SES today and um, this was uh, what we like to call a black swan runner. Uh, basically, a black swan is something that happens, you know, once in every blue moon, right? The black swan is super rare to find. It's, it's one, it's a, it's a play that comes around that normally catches every single person off guard. Now, like, at you know, like what, what we try to do in the chat is we try to kind of guess when things have been kind of stagnant for a very long time. That's typically when you'll see a black swan runner appear. When everyone is just not expecting anything, it just it, the market's been totally dead, and we'll finally get one. And that's the case this time. It doesn't have to be a dead market for a black swan runner to come, but very often that's when they like to come. And we call this a black swan runner because it went from three yesterday, right? Or like I guess it gapped up on the on the day one of the move. Uh, you know, we gapped up to three and pushed to five, and the next day, you know, we open at ten and go all the way up here to 26, right? That's what we call a black swan, just something that completely just defies all reasonable expectations of, of stock behavior. So let's get into it. So, I mean, I guess we can start from day one because this, kind of this is kind of when the move starts, right? So this stock on day one, I actually had a nice trade on this I had a nice trade on this on day one too. I got a nice short up here, the first resistance um, short up here on pre-market highs when we pushed up here and I covered down here. But this this place started when the stock gapped up, right? And it gapped up on, you know what? I don't even, the stock gapped up on news and and the news was, I'm checking it out right here. Yeah, that's right. The, the, yeah, they agree to acquire Australian Future Energy for 36 billion, right? It's just a it's a simple catalyst. It's a good catalyst. It's a it's a hype catalyst because it's a lot of money for a small company. So it's a, it's a big deal. So it's like it's material. It's a material catalyst. It's not something like oh here are insignificant drug reports, right? So it's it's something significant, but. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to turn into a black swan. There's a, there's a lot of catalysts that show up that kind of create a that that don't create a black swan. What really creates a black swan is sentiment, right? The market has to be ready for one or not ready for one, meaning that traders kind of have to un, you know not be expecting trends to continue, not be expecting stocks to you know like traders get comfortable with stocks fading and that becomes a little too anticipated you know, or two guest and when short sellers get caught and the volume is high enough on a low float, like this one was like a one million share float, what can happen is just the, the float rotates over and over and over and over and over again and at, at some point it comes to the point to where it doesn't even matter how high the stock is because the float has been rotated so many times that it there's not just this enormous amount of demand or selling pressure from people who bought the bottom of the move and sold the top. The, the, the theory of float rotation is that the, the buyers at three, four, five, six, and seven, when we trade 30 million shares two days in a row, the buyers down here had ample time to get out at eight, nine, ten. How many buyers are actually buying at three, holding on to their position and selling at 25, right? The, the, the theory of float rotation is that the, the buyers normally with that kind of volume and this kind of price increase, someone who held at three, they're probably taking their gains at six, seven, right? Or five, right? And then the people who bought at six and seven are taking their gains at eight and nine. And 
there's not this, you know, not everybody is holding on and everyone, you know, has to panic and sell all at one time because there's a float rotation. Everybody's getting churned, bought and sold as the stock's going up. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.